And usually what they teach you is you need strong legs and need to use your upper body, but not too early and then pull with your arms. And rowing works differently. Uh, you need lots of leverage. I would say rowing is at least, at least 50% deep layer core muscles. I think there are three exercises you need to become pretty proficient at while you're starting to row. I've brought a fair share of people from absolute beginner level to top competitive level. And I'm talking, I'm talking about you know, top 10 in the world from, from absolute beginner. And if there is a, as we say in German, roter faden, red line or red thread or thread um, going through, it's your ability to move your pelvis. And the pelvis sits above your hip joint and you need to be able to move it. So let's jump right into it. The first exercise, in my humble opinion, is a good morning. A good morning is nothing but you doing that with a stable back. How do you do this? Well, first of all, let's, I hope you can see me, because I'm re-recording this. The first recording, of course, was not in focus. And you can't use autofocus if the light behind me is that strong. I know it could change the lighting situation, but let's not get into that detail. So, first of all, um, have about a shoulder wide stance. I slightly bend my knees. I try to be uh, anchored into the ground. That's for me important. Not just with my legs somehow, stand, wishy washy, no, stable. Um, I don't even put my, put my chest out, but I have a solid stance. You couldn't, you couldn't easily get me off balance now. And then the next thing I do is I slightly bend my knees and I don't bend my knees forward. I bend my knees in such a way that I move my butt back. So like a ducktail, work, work. Okay. And then the next thing I do is I rotate my pelvis. This already starts with the pelvic rotation. And this is why, I don't know, one of the first videos in this channel with Jakob um, was, you know, how to rotate everything. And one of the most important rotations is this one here, being able to do that. And most people start this way. I'm rotating my pelvis. No, you're not. It's fertilization of what you're doing. Rotate your pelvis that way. And you should be able to go farther and do that. That is not just some, okay, belly dance. No, this is rowing. As a rower, you need to transfer force from the soles of your feet to your hands. You need to be able to control everything in between. So, well, shoulder wide stands, duck tail out, slightly bend your knees, lock your bent knees, lock your hip joint, try to make your ventral chain, the front of your torso long, and then what you do, you drop down to here. You shoot, I don't see myself, but I think it's parallel. At the beginning, when I started to do this, um, and I started too late, um, I could only go up to here, and then I became round. So what I did is, that is a mirror, right? You guys are a mirror right now. And I'm looking into a mirror and say, oh, okay, so I hold it there. Ah, oh, okay. And the more I did this, the better I came. Yes, you can say, well, you shouldn't twist your head. Hey, you gotta watch yourself somehow. So if you don't like this, turn around, duck tail, good stance, walk down, and eventually you get down to that level. Okay, that's step one. Step two, uh, a broom. One of my favorite tools to demonstrate things because it's a bar. And, and the way I do it is I just hold it like a regular barbell. Just put it that way. And, and try to do the same thing with the bar. That far, that far, that far. Excellent. And when you go up, it shouldn't be just your back. You need your legs. Wow. That is the key, okay? So step by step, I don't expect you to be perfect, but I expect you to try. See, life is about failing more than about succeeding. Well, and the ultimate step is to do this with a, with a barbell. That's a 20K, uh, a 20 kilo Olympic size barbell. And you can do the same thing with a barbell. Whoop, good stance, Wah. plank. That's a good thing if you use a bit of weight, you feel it better. Same thing, stable, duck tail out. You need to engage your, your, your core quite a bit. And down, and hold it, and back up. That is a good morning. Okay, next step. You should be able to 
do a decent squat. Now, most people can't do a squat either because their back is not stable and or their legs are not stable. So some people do squats that way. You see this? Here. I hope I didn't focus now. Desperately, I hope so. You go down and then to do this or to go down and do that. Hey, that's the first thing you gotta work on. When you do squats, ideally, do them in front of a mirror. And the first thing you check is your leg axles. Hip, knee, ankle. Drop, okay? And then you go down, see, ah, which, which stance did you have? Well, the best, the best thing that I heard, and it somewhat works for me, is just walk. And every, whatever the stance is, this is your stance. Somewhat true. Because if you're good at that and you get your muscles under control, uh, you can do somewhat clean squats in many different positions. So I think I can do a fairly decent squat with my legs pretty close together. That's how I was taught doing squats. This way, so that way. But I, I can also do it wide. Um, supposedly, it depends on the, the way your hip is shaped. And I think there is uh, some truth to that. So try it out. The most important thing for me is that your back is stable. You don't want to have a hollow back. You don't want to have a round back. It should be a stable back, the natural position of your spine. And that is different from person to person. And the next thing I'm very keen on is the stance. Leg, axles. Okay? And then you try your first squat. Look down on yourself. Oh, yeah. You can do squats two ways. You can do the, the, the right now, ever so popular knees over toe squats. So that would be something like this. Excellent, but not for me. What I'm keen on is triggering the ham, the butt, and hamstrings. Okay? So I'm keen on being able to tilt my pelvis forward, duck tail back, and go into a nice deep squat where you have your knees not necessarily far past your toes. I wouldn't be religious about it, but it should be, you feel it. You feel it if you load your glutes. This is what I'm looking for. And the next thing is, how do you increase your back mobility? Or just do squats in front of a wall. That's, that's, that's how I teach most beginners. So you literally stand a foot away from a wall and then uh, you do a squat. And you shouldn't be touching the wall. And if you're good at that, you do it with extended arms. So let's say I do it here so you can see it better. So let's say that wall were extended up to here. I would do a squat. And the second stage would be to do it. Did you see the first one? Let's repeat it. So a foot away from the wall, I do a standard squat. I shouldn't touch that. Okay. Then you do the same thing with hands above your head. And you don't touch that. When this is working, our friend the broom comes into play. And uh, I, what, what I put on a plane for my athletes worldwide, any age category, is um, front squats. Front squat, I, I will explain this in a moment, but front squats are just ages more effective than, than back squats because we trigger the core much more. Rowing is much more about the core than anything else. When I was. Uh, 2021, 20, 22 was in the under 23 national team. I strengthened the leg, my, my legs to the max. I had very strong legs, but my core couldn't take it. You know why I need strong legs? Hmm. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do a separate video about it, but so much the legs were working against themselves, and that's one of the that's one of the most prevalent problems I see with most rowers. Ineffective technique leads to tired legs. Okay, so the next thing, squats, here, a regular front squat. I personally like to do it that way. I don't, I don't hold it like this, this is way too light. I like to balance the bar. So you need to be quite, quite good at that in order not to hurt yourself. But I like to do it that way. So I like to do a, a squat like this because A, your core has to be much tighter than doing a back squat. Because here you can always go that way. But if you balance, uh, you, have to, you have to be careful, especially 
And that's how, that's how I personally do front squats. So, this way, I balance the weight. Uh, usually, when I pick the weight off the rack, I, I don't even touch it with my hands. And then I do my front squats like this. I balance it. Hop. And from the side. Can you see this? I hope so. Down, and I stay there. And back up. This triggers your core tremendously. And uh, you cannot, you cannot be uh, lazy. You have to be, you have to uh, consider your, your given core strength very well. You cannot force another repetition if the core can take it. So that protects you back tremendously. So when this is working, we can finally approach the overhead squat. Now, you can start the overhead squat with a, with a broom. What I don't like about it is you don't feel the weight. Ideally, when you do an overhead squat, and I'm, I'm a rower. I'm not a weight lifter, not an Olympic lifter, not a power lifter. I'm a rower. So if you are a pro in, in lifting, please correct me. I'm sure I'm doing tons of mistakes, but I think I do it in a way where I don't hurt myself. And I'm not doing this with lots of weight because we rowers don't need that. But I'm looking forward to your critique. I depend on that. So what I like to do is uh, feel the weight. When you do this, I try to have my shoulders positioned well and same stance as with a regular squat. And when I go down, I have to make sure that my weight is over the top. So it should be in one line down through, my, through the middle of my foot. And with a broom, you don't feel that. Uh, you, you literally could do that and it would be okay. Now, if you do this with a, uh, what's that, 45 pounds, 20 kilos, I don't know for sure. So if you do this with a bar like this, that's not gonna feel too good. So you have to be quite keen to keep the weight over are your center of gravity. And I do this as a warm up for front squats. And if you do an overhead deep squat, go down as far as you can do, cleanly do it. And then ideally stay in the bottom position. Okay. How, how many reps? Three, four, five, not many. It's more the quality of execution. I don't think you should do overhead deep squats more than 15 or 20 reps. Uh, that's a lot of wear on your shoulders. And I certainly don't recommend to do that with heavy weights, not, at least not for rowers, unless you are a weightlifter. Okay, last exercise. Well, there, there are many, many, many more, but the third one is the arm adapted Hercules row. Uh, the way it started out is I was at the gym and I wanted to do one on dumbbell rows, but no bench was free. And I said, well, I gotta get this in anyway. So I grabbed a dumbbell, held with the other hand onto another one, had a perfectly stable back. This is important for me. And because I, I killed my back on the erg, on, on a linear drive erg. That's why I came up with the bi row with my partner. So I'm very protective of my back. And, and you get a hold of that. And the idea is that you keep your shoulders suspended and work from a trunk rotation. So you do that instead of doing this. And I explain in a moment on a bar why this is important. But so far, hypothetically, you should be able to do this. Whoop, let it go. And the idea is that you get most of the speed with a trunk rotation. And I started out, that's 17 and a half kilos, that's no weight. I started out with 25 kilos, I went to 30. Now I'm doing this with 50 kilos. That's a, probably more than I'd need. Uh, I could do more weight than that for 15, 20 reps, but we rowers don't need much more weight on the hand. You bio row owners can do this. Uh, look at the at the Biro app in signal mode and 
go full force uh, or race pace and just see what the Newton scale says. It's very likely you don't pull more than 40, 50, uh, 400, 500 Newton. So that's roughly what, 40, 50 kilos at most, at most, maybe 60 kilos, but only peak performance. So we don't need much more on the hand because we need to transfer all of that for an entire one or two K. Okay, why is this um, exercise important? Now, this is, as you see, I'm at the viral workshop. These are these neat production platforms we have. And uh, that is a Biro Pro. I personally think uh, we're now, it's safe to say it's the best rowing machine in the world. You know how this entire thing started out here? Nothing, nothing. For 17 years, one to three day jobs, at a brief period of time, four day jobs, to pay for this. No loan, no investors, and I want to keep it that way. We can make our own decisions. Okay, and everything is made here. So, the Barra Pro has an identical setup with the boat. It's exactly like the boat, and a good thing is, even a beginner can row it. The most important thing for you to understand is, during the drive, you want to keep your shoulders long, and suspended but still stable. What we don't want is to do that because this will exclude your lats from working properly. Remember the test we did? Make your lats wide. <laughs> Low shoulders, wide lats. Now pull your shoulders up. Oh, lats go narrow. Pull your shoulders down, make your lats wide. Oh, pump up again. High shoulders almost exclude the effective use of the lats. Okay, now, how do you do that? How do you engage them? Hmm. The point is, just like we did this exercise, this is one of the exercises that teaches you how to use the lat, because essentially, what we're gonna do is use legs and upper body to drive energy around these inboards. This is why your back doesn't hurt in a real boat. This is why the generation before mine could row until they were 80, 85 plus. Not so my generation. A lot of them have back issues. And if, if you collegiate rowers and coaches probably know that, but a good deal of your crews have to sit out there repractice because of injuries. And that's ridiculous. Rowing shouldn't, shouldn't even see any injuries. Well, back to the point, back to the topic. So during the drive, your shoulder should be suspended. And at that stage, you want to transfer force from your legs into the trunk and the trunk um, can only hold stable. The trunk's main job is to avoid rotation, not to generate motion. It's, it hasn't got the right muscles to do that except for the abs. Ugh. But other than that, it's just, just meant to avoid rotation. And the idea is to keep the back as stable and passive as possible, just like your arms should be used like hooks. And when you go from legs to upper body, your shoulders, and that's the mistake many people make, they do this. <laughs> You're missing out on the upper body swing. That here is where you get most of the speed in rowing. It's legs to upper body rotation. It only works if you have your lats engaged. And your lats, your lats are only engaged if you keep your shoulders long. Long. Not like this. Yeah, you can swing, but hey, it's half as effective. But if you do this, Oh, you can feel your weight having immediate effect. That's what we do in these Saturday classes. Armtraining.com, join the Saturday classes. This is where we do that. And here you go, oh, heavy. And for that, this is exactly the exercise. Long suspended shoulders, start with the trunk rotation, and then don't do an arm pull, but do a lat pull. Keep your shoulders low. There's much more to be said, much more to be explained. And I'm going to wrap up here, I'm going to head home, but let me know if I should explain some things further. You're in my community. Let me know how I can help you. How can I serve you better? With this being said, if you want to work with me, get a training plan with cardiovascular work, strength, mobilization, stretching, everything comprehensively included so you are at your peak performance on day X over a one, two, three, four, five year period, however long your stretch of time is, starting from pro level to super pro, beginner to competitive, junior, want to go to college, collegiate athlete, want to make it to varsity, 
during the off season, you are a Olympic candidate and you really want to make it into the team or you're just a beginner and you want to become a competitive masters rower and you're dedicated, join us. Arm training, team arm training is an awesome team of people around the world. Most of us meet Saturdays live during these live classes. We meet at rowing camps. The next one is going to be in Budapest in May 2024. And then there's the, and then I offer training plans in combination with technique training. And if you've got more time, I do weekly one-on-one -on -one sessions with you or multiple one-on-ones per week. With this being said, you should try to buy a rower. Um, a couple of our customers across the globe um, have joined us and they offer you to try a buy rower at their home because they're convinced. And uh, there's a trap. If you try to buy a rower, the chance that you buy one is very high. I don't like to sell. People who know me know that I actually never sell. Um, try it yourself. Make your own opinion. Don't go by hearsay. Try. And, and feel what it feels like. I can talk for ages how this is good and realistic and all. I know this. If I build something, it's going to be the best in the world or nothing. This is my attitude. But you have to feel it. So log on to biro.com or send us an email to um, info at rmtraining.com or info at biro.com. It goes to my inbox anyway. And we direct you to customers across the globe who are willing to let you have a go. With this being said, that's it. That was the video. I thank you very much for your time and for watching. And if you think that somebody else could benefit from that, uh, share the video. It helps me. The, the, better, the, the bigger my channels become, the more time I'm going to dedicate to do videos for free to help the rowing community. And a community of rowers who probably never touch a boat but want to be competitively fit. See, the point is you may never possibly want to compete, but you want to be competitively fit. So you're fit for everything life throws at you. Enough of philosophy. Thank you very much for watching. Cool to have you with us. Subscribe, like, share, and I see you in the next video. All the best. Bye-bye. Hold it. We have a birthday. Maddie, a happy birthday to you. You probably have the best teammates in the world.